A few videos ago, I did a sketchbook spread with my alcohol markers, illustrating all my spring favourites as kind of a mindful activity and also to practice using my markers. And I gave some of my tips in that video. I basically do minimal blending and focus on trying to use not as many colours uh, to do each illustration. So today I thought I would do a similar spread but for my summer favourites and share some more tips on how to use markers. And I really want to show you how easy markers can be. I think this is a very beginner friendly approach. But before we jump into my sketchbook, I wanted to show you these really cute pins I made from my illustrations. I used GSJJ who do all types of merchandise and they reached out to me asking if they could make some pins and stickers for my shop and I jumped at the chance because I absolutely love making stickers and I've never made pins before so these are my very first enamel pins. I went for the sweet and spicy theme, if you've been following my art for a bit you'll know that I love drawing and painting strawberries and chilies. And I made the backing cards myself using Procreate and then I printed them at home on my printer and I'm in love with the cute design. So anyway, the process was super easy and a representative at GSJJ was super responsive and helpful along the way, especially seeing as I've never made enamel pins before. They asked me where I wanted the specific colours and the gold outline to be and they also sent me several mock-ups before we landed on the final design. And then they also made me these really cute and lovely glossy stickers. I personally love stickers and these came out so nice. I made the oranges one and then I did my pigeons design and this time in glossy instead of matte, which is what I usually have this design printed on. And a dragon fruit one with cute little hearts, which is my personal favourite. I'm giving this orange one away as part of every order in my shop this month and speaking about my shop I'm actually closing down my Etsy store at the end of August so I'm having a really big sale where if you spend over $25 you get 25% off your entire order and I'm not planning on coming back to Etsy I'm going to be switching up how I sell my art online and having a bit of a refresh of the things I make so this will be the last chance to buy my art for a little while and I won't be making more of these exact stickers or pins or prints so once they're gone they're gone and thank you GSJJ for making these really lovely high quality pins and stickers for me definitely check them out I'll put a link down below I had a really great experience Okay, let's get back to my sketchbook. So I had a lot of questions on the type of sketchbook I used in my last few marker videos and this is the Stillman & Burns Zeta series sketchbook. It's not made specifically for alcohol markers but I just love how it takes the ink and I love working in sketchbooks over loose paper. There is some bleed onto the back of the page as you would get with most sketchbook paper but because I don't do a lot of heavy blending the bleed isn't too bad and I don't really mind it that much. So I first start out by planning out what I'm going to draw and then sketch everything out and my sketches are pretty loose and simple but they give me a really good guide for my line art. And here are the outlines. I wish it was that easy, but actually it's not that bad because as you can see, these are super simple outlines. There's something about coloring in really simple line artwork of things that I love and using markers to do it that just throws me back to childhood. You know, like coloring in a special coloring book of things that are customized to you basically. And I love how art makes me feel that childlike joy. Okay, so this is the only illustration that is at a really bad angle where you can hardly see it because of my hand. So I apologize about that. I don't know what I was thinking this was a good angle. But anyway, this is Ube flavored bubble tea. And apart from loving the color of it, I've also been loving bubble tea this summer. So I had to just illustrate it. So for this illustration, I ended up using two shades of purple, one dark and one light. I was swatching the colors on the side there to see which one looked better. And then I used two shades of gray and then black. And to get depth in my purple, I layered the marker a few times. I was trying to get those swirls the tea and milk makes when it's first made. So using varying levels of pressure with the marker helps to get those lighter areas where I wanted the marker to almost fade into the white paper.
Okay, so my second illustration is of some gouache, but not just any gouache. This is acrylic gouache, which I've only properly tried this summer. I tend to use regular gouache, but I fell in love with this color. I really, really love the color pink. And so when I received this, um, it drew me in so much. So this one was very simple. I used two shades of grey, a really light grey that I could layer a few times to get darker and a dark grey and then a pink and then obviously the pen for the writing and the white gel pen for highlights. So looking at my reference photo, I make sure to deepen the colours in the areas that I need to so I can build dimension because essentially it's like with everything else, when you're painting or drawing, you want to make sure your values, you're getting all your value range so that you can get that 3D effect. If you want to start doing illustrations in this style, I think tubes of paint or tubes of products um, are the easiest to start off with because it's about being as simple as possible and layering where you need to get that depth and I think a tube or even a glass or a bottle are really good subjects to be able to practice this technique. And here I'm going in with that second dark grey to really pick out the edges and you can see how it immediately gives dimension to the tube. And that's only using two colours, two shades of grey. You really don't need tons of colours to make your illustrations stand out. Then another symbol of my summer is some sunglasses of course and I think the hardest part for this illustration was getting the glasses to be as symmetrical as possible. I used two main colours, black and grey, and then for the gold pieces of the glasses I used a very light yellow and a very dark yellow to get that contrast and the white gel pen to give that shine to the reflective pieces. One thing I find with markers is doing two layers will help prevent the streakiness. It's a simple tip, but you don't need more than two layers and then you have to wait for it to dry. I say this because at the beginning I used to go over and over a section because I didn't really wait for it to dry properly, so I kept thinking it was streaky. So I wanted to incorporate my fruit of the season, so I attempted a peach or a nectarine rather, and I did struggle with it a bit, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's because I overcomplicated myself with too many colours, because I kept thinking I needed more transitions to make the peach have dimension. But it was a good challenge and I think it turned out well, even if it ended up looking a bit more like an apple in the end. Um, also because peaches don't really have that highly reflective peel, I couldn't rely on the white gel pen to help make it gain that dimension like I do with the strawberries that I do with markers. My whole style with markers is to kind of avoid blending as much as I can. But anyway, it's fun to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and I really want to be able to illustrate everything in this style, so it was good that I tried. These are my summer go-to sandals, some platform Birkenstocks, and these were super fun to do. Again, with very minimal colours, one black, one grey, and a brownish colour. And just using the layering technique to get that depth makes them look so dimensional. And of course, the white gel pen. I'm always saying the white gel pen because people get mad at me when I don't disclose the white gel pen as part of my colour selection, which is understandable because it does a lot of work in making the illustrations look really 3D. So that's why I always mention it. 
Um, this is another illustration idea that I think can be good when you are starting out, picking your favourite shoes and then just two or three of the main colours that you see. Simplify it and just concentrate on getting the values, the dark areas and the light areas. You can see here how I'm double and triple layering the grey to really pick out those darker values on the shoe and it's amazing how layering the same colour really does make it go that much darker, like you can achieve a significant value range with the same marker colour. These white highlights really help the shoe come together so well. I'm in love with this gel pen. I think it's a definite must if you're going to be doing alcohol marker illustrations to have a white gel pen. I want to see if I can get a few more color gel pens actually because I think they could add to these illustrations because they're so opaque that you can really get them to layer over dark colors underneath and you can still see them really well and this could help with different details. Okay, making my pins has been such a fun part of my summer, so I had to record them in my visual journal of summer faves. And this is one of those illustrations that probably doesn't say much to anyone else, but is important to me, so I really wanted to draw it. And it was a bit of a challenge because it's such a tiny object, but I tried to capture as much detail as possible and also make it really look recognisable like a 3D pin. So it was important to get that angle that showed that it was a pin, that it was 3D, the backing as well, the um, yellow clutch too just to make it look recognizable in general and the black fine line pen that I used was really important here because it helped me get those tiny lines and also add some shading where I needed and because it's the smallest size this is the 005 it was perfect for such a small illustration Okay, here's another tube, but this time it's of sunscreen, and I literally applied the same principles and also colour selection that I used for my tube of paint. And focusing on my reference photo, I made sure to look where the light and the shadow was happening, so slightly different than the tube of paint, but still the same kind of approach. So again, another super easy illustration. For the cap, I used three yellows, and I just layered them over each other. No real blending happening. I got some questions in my last mark, a video about how to blend markers and hopefully through this video I've shown that I really don't blend them at all. At most I'm just layering and focusing on colour placement but there is no intense blending happening between colours. And then I add the text details first in pencil to get the placement right and then I go over it in pen. And I think a really cute idea if you want to experiment with this technique with markers would be to do a spread of your favourite paint tube colours or maybe like your favourite cosmetics. I personally find the repetitiveness really fun and it helps with practice. So I was in New York a bit this summer for various things and I made some really amazing memories there and I was thinking through what illustration could represent this and I know it's a bit cheesy but the Statue of Liberty looks really interesting to draw and this is actually from a photo I took of it. So I love doing this because it not only was challenging to sketch, I think I showed at the beginning of the video that I re-sketched this a couple of times, but it was also really interesting to simplify and get the overall variation of values. It basically made me want to sketch more statues because you can get so much light and shadow play on them because of the angles. So one of my favourite YouTubers, Slu, he captured statues in a museum with marker pens and after doing this illustration, I really want to try doing this on the go. I think markers are so portable too because they're perfect to travel with, um, so it will be a really interesting thing to do it in plein air or on site as well.
And here are all the illustrations finished. I love doing this so much. It's really like maintaining a visual journal of my memories and I love doing this seasonally, but I may try and do this more often to record things happening more on the go because it's such a quick method as well with the markers. And then I added some hearts and stars to fill in those blank spaces and keep it in the style of my spring spread. I hope you enjoyed following along me filling in this spread. And please let me know if you try to do some of these illustrations of your favorites too in this style. I love seeing your art and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!